Yeah, so um, just reminiscing, my man, just thinking about uh, Project Blowed. Project Blowed. For years, I thought it was Blown, Project Blown, but it was actually Blowed. <laughs> so it was a, just a workshop, my man. Um, ben Caldwell, this, air, um, this elder, had put together a space where we can practice hip-hop, you know, um, just an insightful dude. So after we, we we come from Good Life Cafe, which was an open mic, but there was no cursing allowed. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like the elder PG. had it right. Yeah. Which, which again, that's a skill in and of itself, especially when people curse when they're not rapping. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> or write their, write their raps with curses and then they have to figure out a way to edit it when you're on stage. That was cafe, um, that was Good Life Cafe. That was that, that open mic. So after that, cats would go down to um, to Project Blow, and, and there you can uh, you can do whatever you need to do on the mic. Like <laughs> there was no restrictions. Okay. Yeah. So Ben Caldwell had um, just opened up this space, man, and um, he just permitted like um, graffiti pieces to be created and 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 unhung. It was um, space to dance. And then there was a literal stage and quality sound, too. It was like quality sound in, in this little uh, storefront in the Mert Park. And 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 the magic, yet again, uh, that, that came out of there. And then and, and actually surrounded it. Like, before it would even open, let's say it was supposed to open at 10 or 11, there would be, like, a crowd gathering you know what i'm saying like, like outside the joint yeah yeah you'd be like okay yeah it's going on you know so you you would you would show up and uh it would just be just mcs flocking from all over you know uh all over la county you know what i'm saying just yeah. really just showing up to to, to practice their skill set and then um again all elements was represented djs you know sometimes they can um they can spin um but usually it was a house DJ, from my knowledge. You had to sign up on the list. It was only like three dollars to get in. They had um, knowledge was outside. Like that was that's that's what's missing. Like when you, when 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 people talk about hip hop ciphers, and it's just a rhyme battle. There was also like knowledge ciphers. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and what would happen to the MC? Is that he'll be participating in the knowledge cy- um, cipher, and then he'll he'll cross over and freestyle, you know what I'm saying? In 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 um, rhyme cipher, mm-hmm. so the content will get put into poetry. You feel me? So if he's over here um, building on today's mathematics or whatnot, then it would be in his rhyme by the time he's coming off the top of his head, because that would be what was on top of his head, right? Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah that so, makes sense. Yeah, so that 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 was that was major. It was also this this elder floating around. He actually looked like Elijah Muhammad. He was like a um, he was an elder, like literally an elder that 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 spent his Thursdays teaching, like and 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 debating or having dialogue or just engaged in conversation with younger people. And um, he was like a mysterious like <laughs> some old mysterious old dude. <laughs> Yoga was literally. <laughs> Walking around uh, Lemur Park you know, on on Project Blow nights, and um, so Thursday nights was hella special, man. If he was uh, if he was practicing hip hop as a culture, you know, a lot of a lot of is reduced to just commercial rap. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. they confuse that with hip hop. But when you talk hip hop, I mean, again, like graffiti was was well represented. You know, uh, dancing like like. B girl and uh, and and B boy was official. Like there was this sis. Um, I think her name was Gina or yeah she Damn, she was Gina. she was phenomenal, homie. She was the best dancer there. Like period. Like and she also used to um, go to um, Elements, which was another hip hop club on Sunday nights. This was a Thursday night joint project blow, mm-hmm. and Gina would um shut down i mean ora was a phenomenal dancer too you know what i'm saying it's a rastafarian brother with, with with ridiculous skills i forget exactly what type of it was like a mix of hip-hop and um not hip-hop but up rocking and and um hey, up we used to, yeah we used to call it um housing probably like a, a year or two be, before but i don't know what they called their own craft you know what i'm saying but these yeah. cats was they would be a dance circle like freestyling on the stage DJing 
on the stage and then like open fucking like dance battles just like just like beautiful man like graffiti featured on the stage you understand me and then it was just open to the youth man just this 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 elder was wise enough to say the youth need the youth need a, a safe space to practice their craft and out of that again came commercial success a lot of these people went on to record uh music and um and sell music and travel the world you know not as many as i feel should have i think again we should have should have um, took advantage of that and really locked it in, honed it in. Yeah. But, um, and that's why it was hurtful to see um, 8 Mile, you know, because cause Eminem's a, a student of hip hop, and he put forward a scene from his hometown, from my, from my knowledge, you know, I imagine that was factual. And, um, and that 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 is long overdue for for L.A. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. L.A. Underground has produced enough commercial success, but as well as pr- produced a sound like the sound of um, I forget that group. It was like Crucial Conflict or something. Like they 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 were um, popular for 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 rapping similar to L.A. Underground. Onyx was another group that um, definitely. Um, L.A. Underground cats had a beef with because they were so popular, but the sound was, you know, it, it, it kind of had had a, a, it felt like it had a little L.A. Underground uh, influence. Like they bit uh, off of them a little bit. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I would say influence. I mean, again, this is, you know, this side of it isn't, you know, there's no way I can document this. You understand me? It was right. just the feeling. The feeling was that these are commercial success stories that have similar sounds that definitely didn't predate this L.A. underground sound, but L.A. is known for gangster rap, which was like, who, who, nobody likes gang banging in L.A., you feel me, right other now. than gangsters. Like, gang, gang members themselves like themselves, but, you know, gang members always ruined a good thing with a fight or a shooting or a jacking. Like, it was, what the oh, fuck, yeah. man? Like, so I just, I just distinctly remember... And, Global Flotations was, was um, Zaggle Brown and his crew. These cats went on. I mean, um, a few of them, they do producing and, and, and things all behind the scenes, um, probably on that festival circuit now. But at the time, they were selling mixed tapes, and it was just like, like so organic, my man, so beautiful just to see this, 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 um, this entrepreneurial spirit, this hustle, this grind. For this craft, like you know what I'm saying, just yeah. some some early just new mixtape, you know, global flotations, and then the name. I mean, just check that out. That global flotations, like that shit was killer. We had two thousand crows floating around. These cats was dope. It was um, it was a clan of MCs. You feel me? Different groups came together to to, to um, race the spades was one of them back in the day. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Race the spades. Killer. Yeah, Gizmo and um. I forget the name of his crew right now. Um, funky dialect. You know what I'm saying? These cats had like St. Eyes deals and all types of things. Just sponsorship. Yeah. Underground MCs like trying to figure it out. Jay Smooth, um, he was an MC as well, but he was a businessman. He, he's a good dude. You know, solid dude. Was uh, the face of um, Project Blow, the business side for for years, and may, maybe still that. You know what I'm saying? Like mm-hmm. that's he, he's a solid, solid man. Uh, Orko the Alien was was another. Um, I mean, these cats was doing alternative hip hop before we were calling it alternative hip hop. You know what I'm saying? Like right. this is just some childish Gambino in the '90s type shit. You know what I'm saying? Just really on, off their thing. Murs came out. Um, if I'm not mistaken, I, I'm sure he was um, he was around. I don't, I don't personally remember him, um, but I know that he got that uh, he got that regard. So I imagine he was definitely um, around doing his thing. You know what I'm saying? It had um, MCs like Samir, just a like a Muslim, you know, with locks and consciousness just on the mic, just just you know, <laughs> just destroying. The, the the when when freestyle used to be defined as coming off the top of the head, like. And not having a pre-written. Yeah. Right. So just to see this quick wittedness, my man, it just it's 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 something to marvel at. Peace from Freestyle Fellowship is probably one of the 
the best storytellers as far as freestyling goes and battle battling with stories like amazingness like i mean micah nine again just these was pillars micah nine from freestyle fellowship just i mean singing in inside of the freestyle like making song drake like, before drake <laughs> oh in, <laughs> indeed you know and it was rumored that he had got signed to dr dre and 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 I mean, just the idea of, of Micah Nine, who um, you can still find his music, and he's probably still recording as he should be. Um, the talent level, my man. Um, I think their commercial success was uh, was Boundaries, which was was speaking about. It actually predicted this day would come when when infiltrators would come and and pervert, you know, our art. You know what I'm saying? And that we should build boundaries. Like this was their their commercial success, which is. Uh, interesting irony but um so do you think um the la underground hip-hop underground kind of didn't get as much shine just because it was boxed in by the the label of gangster rap yeah i mean it it i would say that i mean not having the tools that we have today with the the access to technology so since you would have to get a deal or have at least a mainstream hip um hit so if you, you know, your alternative and the corporations are trying to push gangster rap because that's what's hot right now. Yeah, I mean, again, I I wasn't one of the signed MCs. You see what I'm saying? Right. Um, you have to ask them. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure their story is being told. It may be a Project Blowed documentary out there. I know there's a Good Life documentary that a lot of people carry over, but... um. I know that that there was moments. I mean, there was moments of commercial success. So they definitely was checking the ski low is, is from from you know um, is L A Underground, and he had like they they you know they compare him to Eminem in regards to Eminem uh, copying his style and 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 positioning himself to be a commercial success. You feel me? So yeah. they they had success. Volume ten um, uh, again, like being sampled by outcasts um you know what i'm saying like these are these are major you know uh acknowledgments you know what i'm saying right. um but 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 what stopped them i don't know if they didn't know how to market them after a while or mm-hmm. or labels closed because there's a lot of you know uh bandits you know what i'm saying as i <laughs> oh, guess yeah. in, in every industry there's always a, a pirate ship that's going oh i can do this for you. i can and then they'll rob you or tie you up in some contract yeah um but no i i just feel like there is a um a misconception that that, that true hip hop did not exist in la beyond there were gangster NWA. rap and crip walking right and that's an that's an insult for those of us that actually you know, was developing graffiti, uh, pop dance, um, um, pop locking, and, and break dancing moves. Like we was evolving in all the elements aside from from just gang banging. You feel me? Yeah. So I guess when I hear people talk about it, I hear them talking about like New York rap. Then they skip over this LA underground and they go straight to the West Coast gangster rap. Oh yeah, and I then, mean that because it was commercially successful. And then it slides down to the South with their. Um, but when you go up to to up north, I mean, they they allowed um, the hieroglyphics, for instance. They had that hit ninety three to infinity. I guess they knew that, you know, they knew things would change. You feel me? And, yeah. they, and they put it in the actual title. But what's what's interesting is that even when you go up north, you hear emphasis on the gangster rap up north. You know what I'm saying? It's yeah. almost like okay, here's this creative group, this 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 body of work that they're creating. Is now just drowned out by Eazy-E? Like, get the <laughs> fuck out of here. Geeks and goons. 